Georgie, do you want ginger beef? Are you hungry? Does Georgie want food? Oh, Georgie wants something to eat. Georgie wants something for his tum tum. Georgie want food? Georgie want dinner? Hello, welcome back to Cooking with Craiger. On today's episode, we are doing a bit of a treat. Uh, we're doing something called ginger beef, which I didn't know this, but uh, ginger beef was developed in Calgary in the 70s by chef George Wong of the Silver Inn, I believe it is. It's, I think ginger beef you can get across Canada now, but this was uh, developed here in Calgary in the 70s and became very popular. So we found a recipe online of someone who lives here in Calgary and um, has done a copycat recipe of this. So we're gonna give that a try and uh, hopefully we like this. This is one of the dishes we pretty much order every time we order Chinese takeout. So uh, let's see if we can make it at home. Okay, before I cut the beef, uh, I'm gonna show you how I pre prepared the vegetables. Uh, so you need a large carrot and you're gonna cut that into a julienne slice. So if you can get it that small, that would be great. If you have a mandolin, it'll be a bit easier to do that with. Or if you have a, I guess a peeler would work too. You could peel a strip off the carrot and then cut that into small strips. And then for the green peppers, um, just cut it really, really thin. That's probably I could probably even go thinner than that, but uh, I'll just show you quickly. Ooh, I squirted it right in my eye. It's basically just like that. Make sure you have a sharp knife. And have your fingers curled under. Yes, there is a proper way of, of how you should cut so you don't cut yourself. Um, so you basically, you make a bit of a claw with your hand. I put my uh, pinky and my thumb down and then I kind of hold the uh, thing. Well, actually I use all four fingers on it. Use my thumb to steady. And then what you do is you just have the blade rub against your knuckle. And that's why when you see chefs on, on TV doing it really fast, you're like, how do they not cut themselves? It's because they're resting it against their knuckles. Make sure you always start with a sharp knife. The one thing I learned in cooking school that's always stuck with me is you're going to cut yourself with a dull knife before you cut yourself with a sharp knife. Reason being is a dull knife you need to put more pressure on. The more pressure you have, the less control you have. So always make sure you start with a really sharp knife. Just like that. Look at that. Pick a card, any card. Perfect. Okay, I think we got enough peppers there, so I'm gonna stop with that. So, um, like I said, if you have a mandolin, go with that. Uh, if you don't, you can use a peeler. I'm actually gonna give that a try, because I haven't done it myself, so I'm wondering if this will even work. So you could do this. I don't know if that's gonna be thick enough for this, because once you, you gotta saute this, and I think that's just gonna disappear, so. I don't think you can do this. Um, in that case, I'll show you how to do it the other way then. So what I do is peel, wash, peel the carrot, and then cut a good chunk of it off to make a flat edge. And then there you go. So now, well, that, I could probably go a little more than that. That's about a good chunk. That's a sliver. There we go. So I could even use this piece now. That's basically what we want to get to. Is something about that thin, and then you just cut it this way lengthwise. Is that again? The thinness? Okay. And same thing. Just make sure you control your knife, go slow, you just not a rush here, and you want a little bit of precision if you can. And then you just... Is there a measurement for julienne? Because I remember there. in cooking school, you know, however millimeter by however millimeter. There is, I can't remember what it is, but yeah. So all the chefs out there that, I, that were looking at my julienne carrots and going, that's not julienne, you're probably right. And there you go. Julian carrots. Okay, veggies are done. So what I want to do now is show you how to cut the beef. Okay, so let's get out one of our beef steaks, whatever you want to call it. You want to try to see if you can see where the grain of the beef is. So if you look at this one, it kind of looks like it's going this way a bit. So if I cut across this way, that will give me a more tender cut because what you're doing is you're cutting across the grain. So a lot of the fibers and tendons, whatever else is in there holding the meat together. Um, you're cutting against it, so you're gonna get a lot of a lot more of a tender piece of meat. 
Now I don't know how thin exactly I'm supposed to slice this, so I'm gonna go with this much. Try to keep it consistent if you can. I know not, these aren't gonna be that way, but that's why I cut. Like consistent in thickness, right? So yes. it all cooks the same. Yeah. They don't have to be the same length, just the same thickness basically, yeah. So I believe that would be against the grain as well. Okay, we have our beef sliced into uh, thin strips there, as you can see. Now what we need to do is make our batter. One cup of cornstarch. Be careful when you tilt this into the bowl. You need a half cup of water. You need two eggs. No shells, preferably. You could add some crunch. You probably wouldn't notice it in this if there were eggs in there. Sorry, if there were shells in there. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun with cornstarch. It's not gonna to wanna to move. Oof. I wonder if this would be better with a wooden spoon. There we go, I think it's going now. Yeah, you just wanna make sure you get some lumps, right? Yeah. Maybe I'm supposed to add the cornstarch to the water. I don't know if it matters, but. Oh, so you get the water on the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. It might be easier to mix that way, I don't know. If you're trying this recipe, try that, see if it's better, I don't know. Put it in the comments. That's pretty, uh, it's a pretty thin batter. But... Okay, so we'll head over to the stove and we'll start uh, deep frying this meat. If you have a deep fryer, that's probably gonna work well. Make sure if you're using a basket or something, make sure it's hot in the oil before you put the battered beef in or it's gonna stick to the basket. But I don't know if a lot of people got deep fryer, so we're gonna just do this on the stove with the deep, uh, frying pan. Okay, we have the oil heating up here. So while that's heating, I'm gonna put the sauce together. It's actually really quick to do. So for the sauce, what you need, one third a cup of soy sauce. We have a low sodium soy sauce here. You can, uh, just use whatever uh, tickles your fancy. The recipe calls for three tablespoons of red Chinese vinegar. We did not have that, but we do have a sherry vinegar. If you have a red wine vinegar, that'll probably work as well. So I'm gonna put that in. Two tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine or a dry sherry. Half cup of water. You need a third cup of granulated sugar. The recipe also calls for one tablespoon of crushed chilies. We're gonna go with uh, sambal olek, which is kind of a crushed chili paste in a way, so. Uh, one quarter cup of plum sauce. Okay. I actually thought it was gonna be a bit more than that. Okay, so we got that mixed. We're gonna set that aside and we'll head over and start the cooking. So we'll cut it over there and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, we are ready to go. Our oil is at deep fried temp. And the recipe says do about six pieces at a time, depending on what you're cooking it in. We got a pretty big uh, deep frying pan here, so we can probably get away with a little more than six pieces. So uh, I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of beef in here right now. Yeah, you just, just don't want to overcrowd yeah. whatever you cook in. Okay, make sure they're thoroughly coated. Let's shake off a bit of the excess. And you want to cook these for about seven to 10 minutes or until they're crispy. Make sure you have um, some plates you can put them when they're done cooking so they can uh, drain the excess oil off of. So we have a plate with some paper towel there. And if you have some sort of a slotted spoon or something like that, we've got a little spider here we can use, so make sure they're not sticking together. Okay, I'm gonna pull these ones out. Actually, let's get this little guy out and see what he looks like. I would say those are probably good. Yeah. I mean, you don't want them so hard that you're gonna yeah. break a tooth on them. 
And I think the way the proper restaurants cook the ginger beef is they actually deep fry it twice. Um, we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to go with just a single fry. Is that what's, That's what most home cooks will probably do. And I want to see how the recipe holds up on just the single fry. So. Okay. And then I guess you just keep doing this until it's all done, right? Yep. Okay, we are ready to assemble everything. So we have our beef done. There's actually quite a bit there when it's piled up. We also have uh, two tablespoons of minced ginger and about six minced garlic cloves. I've already showed you the uh, large carrot, julienne, and uh, I think it's a half green pepper. That's probably more like three quarters. It was a smaller one though. What we're gonna do is, I'm using a deeper pot here. Just put a bit of oil in there and you wanna stir fry the, the uh, vegetables uh, up for a couple minutes and then we're gonna put in our sauce that you already saw me whisk together and then we're gonna let that cook for about five to seven minutes to thicken and then we basically put the beef in toss it serve it on rice and have dinner so yeah let's get going here the recipe I'm using here is posted online I'm gonna have a link in the description below but this is Terry Gilson's recipe. So this is a take on her recipe, so I just wanna make sure I credit that uh, as well. So thank you, Terry. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get going here. So I'm gonna throw in my ginger, throw in my garlic. None of it wants to come out. Julienne carrots, thinly sliced green pepper. I'm gonna saute this for about three minutes just to kind of get everything softened up and uh, you want the aromatics, the ginger and the uh, garlic to uh, release. Walk yeah. Yeah, I think you're supposed to do this in a walk, but we don't have one. Um, that's probably going to change this year because I think I want to get a walk. Some of that ginger sticking together, so I just want to make sure it's spread out. All right, so we're going to go with the sauce now. Again, you want to cook this for about five to seven minutes. It's going to reduce a bit. So what, bring it to a boil? Yes. And then... Bring it to a boil. Actually, I think you're supposed to let it boil for a minute or two and then reduce it down for another five to seven minutes. You don't want to boil it that whole time because it'll, it'll just be a paste by then and probably burn. Okay, we've had this going for a couple minutes now. Uh, got a bit of a boil going there, so I'm just going to make sure we're down to medium. And I'm just going to let this reduce for another five minutes. If it is boiling quite hard or rapidly or aggressively, I don't know what the word I'm looking hard, for is. Hard boil? Hard boil? Rapid boil? Rapid boil? Whatever. Just turn it down. You don't want this to reduce too much. You want a, a thick coating, but you don't want like an oyster sauce. You don't want it really, really thick. You want it thick, but you still want sauce. Yes. Okay, we've had the sauce reducing for a few minutes, sorry, probably five to seven minutes, exactly like the recipe says. You can see it's starting to get a little thicker now. Actually, the veg is cooked down a little bit too. That's what it's supposed to look like. So, we're gonna go ahead with this. Now, I think I might have cut this too thin. Um, I'll just show you here what might be more preferable. So, I guess they're almost the same thickness, aren't they? This might be a little too thin, but we're gonna give it a try and see. So let's give it a go. You just want to coat everything in the sauce. I've got the heat off. We don't need to cook anymore. We're good. We're just basically coating our uh, beef. Give this a good coating. I was worried the batter might fall off mm. at doing this, but it seems to be holding up. I was worried this wouldn't be saucy enough, but I think we might be okay. George, you want to come see? Where are you going? Okay, that's softened up a little bit. We are off the heat, so we're good. And yeah, let's serve this up on some rice. We'll give it a taste test and let's see if Terry's recipe is bang on. 
It smells right. Hopefully it tastes right. I'll give it a try in a sec. Okay, let's uh, give this a go. So we got a uh, bowl with some plain rice in it. Uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, Terry's recipe has sesame seeds in it as well. Um, I don't think we have any sesame seeds, so I wasn't able to, uh, to add that to the recipe, but uh, if you look in the description below, you'll see her recipe. It's got the sesame seeds in it. And the uh, one thing I did wrong with this is I shouldn't have put the plum sauce in when I mixed up the sauce in the beginning. You want to do that kind of near the end just before you put the beef in. I think we should give this a go. Mm. That is really good. Here, you got to try it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I think it's pretty much close to like delivery. Yeah, that's very close to the takeout. Um, if I do this again, I'm going to cut the beef probably in a little thicker strips and maybe not as wide. Yeah. And uh, that's, or maybe I think, not as long. Yeah, maybe not as long either. I probably could have cut this into smaller pieces. Even the uh, julienne carrots could have been probably smaller too. But that is ginger beef done. Really, really good. Uh, and can I just say, I can feel, I can, there's some spice yep. eating, but it's not crazy though. I wasn't sure how much, uh, I, I mean, I just kind of eyeballed the sambal olic, so I wasn't sure how spicy it was going to be, but I think that spice level is almost perfect. All right, that's ginger beef. Uh, very good recipe, Terry. Thank you so much for that. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Take care.